When we set out on our Mexico journey, we had no intentions of picking up hitchhikers. However, as we were passing this couple with their dog, we realized there was nothing for the next 180 miles between San Felipe and Guerrero Negro. T and I quickly decided it was the right thing to do and pick them up. For obvious reasons, we considered the safety aspect of our actions and took a photo to send to relatives. In the end, they turned out to be really nice people and we had a lengthy conversation. They noticed our YouTube decal when we stopped and asked about it. They said they would love to share their story. This is not something we do every day, but we're happy we did in this situation. Hope you enjoy their story. for the last 10 years and uh, we just met in, in our own travels and we decided to just to keep together because we had a very similar lifestyle and it was just the right thing to do. Right. And we, we felt that we had so many things in common and this lifestyle, no, not many people go like we do, you know, like you say, hitchhiking around in different ways as well. We're so where are some of the places that you have lived and traveled since you started this? Well, uh, I've been my way to go is so I can kind of travel for longer is that I go to work in the Europe and the United States so I can say foster okay. and then go to cheaper countries and just in a low budget just travel longer time okay. uh, so but anyways when I go to work I am also experiencing the, the country itself in a different manner but I try to travel as well like we did in the United States a few months ago uh, we had a van we bought a van and we we went through different states took some time off between jobs and uh, yeah it was nice so we've been in the states uh, we've been in South America in Colombia Brazil we hitchhiked all the way through the Amazon to where the Amazon the Amazon yeah um, we've been together in, in Europe in different countries as well um, so yeah mentioned the Africa as well. Sorry? You yeah, yeah, we, we've been in Africa as well. Uh, I've been myself in Morocco a few years ago and then when I was sailing across the Atlantic we stopped in Cape Verde for a few weeks uh, to repair some things on boats and just take more more stuff with us like food and water and all you need to grow the nation. So Earlier when we were talking, you mentioned um, hitchhiking while sailing. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of that until you mentioned it. <laughs> so that is something we're going to have to explain a little bit more. Of course. Well, uh, I didn't have any idea of it before going to the Canary Islands, to be honest. Uh, it was just a dream. It was in my head for a long time. Um, I decided to go to, to the Canary Islands specifically because there is a regatta happening there in November. Um, a bunch of boats, like many people, hundreds of them, uh, they go and plan to cross together the ocean. So it's a good time to kind of find a ride, you know, with, with one of those hundreds of boats. Um, but I missed it for a few weeks and uh, I still gave it a shot, you know. I, I went with a friend of mine and uh, we spent a few weeks walking on the pontoons of the marinas, talking to people, meeting people at the sailor bar, uh, restaurants, you know, trying to get in, in, in how you say, like in, in, in contact. 
Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So, so trust, build trust. trust. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we 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 know that we're trapping with good good people, and they know they're trapping with good people as well, right? So at first, with my friend, we found a boat to go hopping the islands. There are seven islands around, and then I met Sarah in one of those boards in one of those islands, and. Uh, since then, we've been like trying to get a boat together and we do work. So she took one herself to Brazil. It took 23 days for her, non stop. And then, a few, few weeks later, I found mine with my friend. He's from Bulgaria. And uh, yeah, we went all the way down to Cape Verde, seven days. Then we crossed the Atlantic, it was 18 days, and then all the way to Colombia, it was 74 days to wow. get there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one thing to hitchhike in a, within a country. Uh, even crossing a state, that may be an issue because, you know, you may find somebody who can drop you at the state line or somewhere, but you're not going to the state that you're going to. Right. But the thought of hitchhiking uh, with somebody who's on a boat, and now you're talking about international travel. Yeah. I mean, it's not like there's anywhere in the middle of the ocean you're going to get dropped off at. Exactly. So yeah. how, do you, how is that coordinated? So, uh, first you're going to find people who are planning to cross an ocean, right? So you just, we, we are kind of flexible, so we, okay. we don't really mind dates or places. If they are close by where we're going, that's good enough. We can make our way. Even in land, whenever we reach land, we can just hitchhike sure. whatever we need to get. You know? Gotcha. gotcha. And, uh, so yeah, that was the first uh, thing to do. The spot and recognize who is crossing the landing. What, so about, speak with them. what about immigration? Because that's also something else that you'd have to be concerned with. Of course, yeah. So. Uh, I have Italian passport as well because my grandfather was from Italy. Uh, so first you gotta figure out if you need a visa or not to these kind of places, you know. Um, and then the captain of the boat takes care of all the paperwork. So you basically give your passport to the person, uh -huh. and they go to the immigration. Uh, they deal with the whole thing. They, they have a list of their crew and they just let them know gotcha. who is on the boat, what their plan is, where they're going. And, uh, yeah. That's very, that's very interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. And that's the reason you need to trust the person you're going with because you're basically giving your papers and everything to that person, you know. And then you're going to spend so much time together in such a small space, you know. It was uh, 50 feet boat. I traveled. Oh, 50? 50 feet. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty small. I mean, big enough to cross the ocean and be comfortable. So I know I asked you this question earlier, but for the camera purpose, how difficult it is for you to actually hitchhike? Um, to be honest, it, it gives me such a hype and energy, you know, I, I really enjoy it because I get to meet very interesting people, locals, travelers as well. Um, sometimes when, when you're traveling by yourself, let's say like in RV or in your own vehicle, sometimes you miss places because you even know really where you're going. You just kind of research through internet or friends, whatever. But when you're on the road like this, locals give you like secret spots and you find yourself immersed in their culture as well. Sometimes they invite you into their house, you know, and you can share with their family and you keep contact. Sometimes they visit you in your home country. So it, it's, a, it's a beautiful experience. It, it's, it's very rich, you know. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, I feel it just gives me more energy. Have you found that 
for when looking at it from the perspective of traveling in different countries, like I said before, different continents. Yeah. Has any country been more difficult to be a nomad traveler than others? Of course, yes. Absolutely. How may I help you? Um, for example, my own country, Colombia, is the hardest I've ever been. And uh, I can understand it because it's it has had so much violence, you know, civil wars for so many years. People are afraid of others, so it's, it's not easy to get a ride there. You gotta go to gas stations and speak yourself, because if you just stand with your thumb up on the road, nobody's gonna pick you up. Exactly. But then if, if you get to know the person, like, at least speak your words, yeah. they can feel your energy, your intentions, and then you might have more uh, possibilities, you know? Yeah. And then places like this, Baja is just easy. It's it's easy. Super easy. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. I didn't expect it, you know? Uh, I, we spent three days in Tijuana uh, trying to hire a taxi, technically, like a ride share. But the people didn't show up, and we said, you know what, we've been traveling all this time, we can just hit the road and, and give it a chance. So we did, and now we are here, super easy. So, we picked you up just south of uh, San Felipe. But where's your final destination on Iba? Well, right now we are heading to uh, Puleje. Puleje. Because we, we expect to rent the place for two weeks so we can rest because we are coming from a very long trip now to the States. I mean, the West Coast. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we need to slow down, plan ahead as well, our next moves. And um, then we want to go to Los Cabos and then cross to Nayarit and keep going south to Mexico City. Probably. That's interesting. And uh, how did you get your little companion? So, um, we were in South Mexico, in the Pacific Coast, in a state called Oaxaca. Um, we were hitchhiking at the time. And uh, one of those, thing, those things I told you, like locals give you, like secret places. So, we found ourselves in Indians. Uh, they are called Chipewa. I'll, I'll send you a link or something later so you can check it out. And um, she was abandoned right there. Uh, she was very sick as well. And uh, we knew it was going to be hard, but we couldn't let her die in, in, in that place. So we just picked her up and uh, went to the bed straight away. And uh, now she's, she's part of the family. And you said you've had her 10 months? 10 months now, yeah. She, she might be a year old, but we've had her for 10 months. She was very little. And it, it was good because we, we got her trained and, you know, she's just... So have you ever had any bad experiences doing this? Um, it depends on what you call bad. Like, I, I say sometimes it's not easy, you know? Like you find yourself in places where it's difficult to get out or just people are not as nice, you know? Um, then you find yourself in dangerous places as well, but people knock you off, so it's good. Um, The worst experience we had, I think, was in San Diego. Just somebody broke our window in the van and took our backpacks. That was like super hard because all our gear, we, we kind of think about what we buy because it needs to be light, it needs to be like um, everything proof, you know? So it takes time to research and buy things. And they just took it all. That was a big hit for us. Yeah. You spoke about your van. Did you sell it before you crossed back over? Yes, you did. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, 
we didn't want to deal with paperwork and all that, you know. So we just got rid of it. Yeah, it is hard sometimes with paperwork when you go to different countries and everything works in so different. That it's just better to go like as new as you can, you know. Yeah. Like, not make it not make it. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's something I have learned in new travels, like as lighter as you can go, it is better, you know, in every sense. Because you are not attached to anything and you know more freely. Um, yeah, that's just my point of view. Less restrictions or things that you have to do. From everything that we've said so far, you're clearly consciously making the decision to to do what you do. Absolutely. Yeah. You just said you instead of having your own vehicle to drive through Mexico and then to continue on you decided to get rid of it. Um, but you also mentioned that you purposely made a decision to to hitchhike as well. Of course. Yes. So with that I don't think it's gonna be a secret if I said that there is a stigma that's um, follows people who are hitchhiking. But the question I think most people would have, especially knowing that you sold your vehicle and you chose to do this is, yeah, why knowing what people would think would a person choose to do you know, something like that? Um, to be honest, uh, I'm, not, I'm not the kind of person who just puts a kind of like people in boxes, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you look like something, then straight away you are in that box of some characteristics. Like, um, and I try people not to do the same with me, right? Um, and that can only be done through experience. Like, if, if somebody could thought like what you were saying, but like these people who hitchhike that are just doing these kind of things, and then they give a chance to somebody like us, we might be able to change their point of view at some point, right? Or maybe they can hear from someone else, and maybe their family picks us up, and then they have our Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and they can show what we've been doing. And uh, so they can now know not everyone is the same on the road, you know? And for us, it's kind of a risk. Say as well because we never know who's picking us up, you know. That was so, my next question. Yeah, so we, we, we kind of give trust to be trusted. That's what yeah. that's a very good response. Thank you. That, that makes sense. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below.